Hello and welcome to another video with Ars Coso and my name is Corinne Chen. I am a cognitive behavior therapy nutritionist, which is a mouthful to say. <laughs> and many people haven't heard of that title before, but what I do essentially is I use CBT techniques and I design nutrition plans to help my clients improve their mental and physical health. And something that affects both your mental and physical health significantly is your relationship with food or how you view food. This influences everything from your eating habits, your appetite, your food choices, and how you feel around food. What I love about my work in particular is that I get to appreciate how complex that relationship is because every single person on planet Earth is unique genetically and they have unique upbringings, preferences, and experiences with eating. So that's why it's probably no surprise to you that one of my biggest pet peeves in my work is when wellness articles and health experts generalize the goodness or the badness of a food. And personally, I will be honest, I am far from perfect. I catch myself doing it unknowingly as well. But I think that's because diet culture and media has been so successful at instilling this polarizing way of marketing food items. From a young age, many of us are taught that foods have moral implications, um, essentially good versus bad. And this very quick, very fast, and very simplified way of processing nutrition information works with the primitive parts of our brain because at one time in our evolutionary history, we needed to know what foods were bad or deadly and what foods were good for survival and this is why I think the diet industry is now worth over $200 billion today because polarizing views on food works. And for a few decades there, as an example for you, in North America, fats were deemed as bad, all fats. So there was a whole generation of people who ate low fat, fat-free processed foods. And then they discovered, wait a minute, not all fats are bad. And in fact, there are so many natural sources of fats like avocados and olive oil that are vital for health and for disease prevention. And so after that, we didn't really learn a lesson. For a few more decades, people in North America said, okay, all carbs are bad now. So people went on low carb diets and zero carb diets. And again, the problem with this line of thinking is it's so extreme and it's not accurate. Not all carbs or sugars are bad and certainly not for everyone. Some people really need sugars to help them do their jobs and thrive in life, but their intake has to match their context. The same goes for any other nutrients that are on the market. And I look at this kind of like the weather. You know, rain itself isn't good or bad. It's all about the context of rain. How much is it raining outside? Is it raining when we actually need more water? How often is it raining? So next time, instead of asking if a food is good or bad, challenge yourself to ask better questions, such as the following. What can this food do for my health, both mentally and physically? How much of this food do I need to help me get those benefits? And how often should I be consuming this? Where and when should I be eating this food for the best results for me? These questions are just to get you started on cultivating a more mindful and informed approach around nutrition. And you'll see that when you ask yourself these things, almost all foods can have a time and place in your unique definition of a balanced diet. Things like chocolate chip cookies, pizza, broccoli, and tofu aren't good or bad, and eating them doesn't make you good or bad. They're simply here to serve your health. We are no longer living in an era where our foods have to be labeled with these black and white life or death messages. That only exacerbates our disordered relationship with food as a generation and it keeps us in the dark about how our bodies really function. This is why I've really enjoyed making the videos and articles for Ars Coso because we get to talk about the science and the context at length. And that's really, really important. For those of you who don't know, Ars Coso is a traditional Japanese fermented beverage that contains gut healthy probiotics and a very long list of micronutrients. 
It's fermented with over a hundred different kinds of whole foods for over a year, and its use for every single person is different. Um, so some people might need a larger serving of it if they're really in a nutrition deficit, while other people need a smaller serving to supplement their already balanced diets. So you get to control how you use it in your healthy journey, and it might even change across your lifespan. So. On that note, I want to say thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it helps you form a new perspective around food. And again, my name is Corinne Chen, and I hope to see you in another video very soon. Have a good day. Bye.